Hi, in this section, we will talk about how to construct control chart for variables. Control chart for variables include mean chart, which is used to trace the central tendency of the process, and the range chart, or R chart, which will be used to trace the dispersion of the process. For the mean chart, there are two ways to construct the mean chart or the control limit of the mean chart. The first one is if we know the sample mean standard deviation sigma x bar. If this is known, we can use the first method. Well, sometimes the sample mean standard deviation may not be given directly. What will be given will be sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population, then if that's the case, we can use the formula here to calculate the sample mean standard deviation. If this is known, we can use the first formula to construct the control limit of the mean chart. However, for most of the case, if neither the population or the process standard deviation or the sample mean standard deviation is given directly by the question. Instead, what is given is just a set of samples. If that is the case, the suggestion is we should not use the first set of formula. Because if the sample size is limited and we calculate the sample mean standard deviation from this limited sample, sample set, then most likely, the sample mean standard deviation will be biased. So if that is the case, then we should use the second set of formula to construct the control chart where the range is determined by the average sample mean and the average range. Range chart is kind of straightforward because we have no choice, we just need to use the every range and two coefficient from the control chart to construct the upper control limit and the lower control limit. Now let's take a look at the example. Here it said a quality inspector took five samples, each with four observations of the length of time for glue to dry. The analyst computed the mean of each sample and then computed the grand mean. So the grand mean here is the average of the mean. All values are in minutes. Use this information to obtain three sigma control limit for means of future time. It is known from the previous experience that the standard deviation of the process is 0.02 minutes. Now for this one, we need to construct the control limit for the mean of future time. So this will be the control limit for the mean chart. It's not a control limit for the range chart. Now it also tells us the standard deviation of this process is 0.02. So we know sigma. So this is sigma, it's not sigma x bar because this is a standard deviation of the process. So given this information, we know that we can use the first formula, which is x double bar plus or minus z times sigma x bar to construct the control limit for this mean chart. So given information include z equals 3, we need to obtain three sigma control limit, z equals three. And the population or the process standard deviation equals to 0.02. So we just go ahead to calculate the sample mean standard deviation as sigma x bar equals to sigma divided by square root of n. So give us a number of 0.01. Now remember, this n is number of observations within each subgroup or within each sample. So here it mentioned we took five samples, but each sample 
with only four observations. So the number for n will be four, not five, not four times five. It's just four. So with all this information, we can take a look at the sample values. And the sample value can be used to calculate the mean for each sample. And eventually, we can calculate the average of sample mean, which gives us a value of 12.11. And next step, we can just substitute all the value into the formula and get the upper control limit and the lower control limit of this mean chart. Next example. Processing new accounts at a, at a bank is intended to average 10 minutes each. Five samples of four observations each have been taken. Please construct the upper and the lower control limit for both a mean chart and a range chart. Now again, we have five samples and each sample has four observations, so n equals to four, again. And we have all the given information here. That's the value for these five samples. Now, we do not know the standard deviation of the process. We do not know the sample mean standard deviation. The only thing given is a set of five samples. And as we mentioned earlier, five samples usually is very, very small and we should not rely on these five sample means to construct the sample mean standard deviation. So the only way we can do to construct the control limit will be use the average range to help us to construct it. Now, given the sample, we can calculate the mean and range for each sample and eventually we can calculate the average of this five sample mean and this five sample range which give us the average of sample mean equals to 10.04 and the average range equals to 0.2 now with all this information we can go ahead to find the corresponding control chart factor so control chart factor here we need A2, which will be used to construct the mean chart. And we need D3 and D4 to construct the R chart. And remember, the number of observations in each subgroup, N, will determine the value of this control chart factor. And as we mentioned earlier, N equals to 4 in our example. So we have A2 equals to 0.73, which is the factor value we use to construct the mean chart. And for the R chart, the lower control limit factor is 0 and upper control limit factor is 2.28. So we construct, we substitute everything into the formula and get the upper control limit and lower control limit of the mean chart equals to 10.42 and 9.66 respectively. And similarly, we can construct the upper control limit and lower control limit for the R chart with D3, D4, and R bar.